In this video, we're going to use the decoder and ping test to troubleshoot some valves that aren't turning on. In this example, let's assume that we've identified the valves that aren't working and we've tried to turn them on manually using the controller. So turn the dial to test all stations slash check system and then go to two wire diagnostics and press next. Select the decoder test and press next again. Press start to begin the testing process, which takes a few minutes. The controller is now turning on each decoder for a few seconds. It's monitoring the amperage draw and determining whether it can talk to the decoder. It can also identify whether there's a short circuit downstream of the decoder or if there's an open circuit. Now when the test is completed, a list of any problem stations will be displayed. So use the plus and minus buttons to scroll through the problem stations and identify any issues. In this case, station two appears to be shorted and it's telling us to check the wiring or the solenoid. Station three is also shorted. Station four has an open circuit as well as station five. Once you reach the end of the list, it will cycle back to the beginning. Now that the controller has identified all of the problem stations, we need to go out and check the wire splices or the solenoids on those stations to determine why we have open circuits or shorts. The list of problem stations can also be found in the auto dial position by pressing the alarm button. So let's assume I've gone out and fixed the problems in the field. There are two ways to check whether you have fixed all of the issues. The first method is to simply rerun the decoder test. Depending on the number of decoders in your system, this could take quite a while. If you're troubleshooting a small number of issues, the ping test is a much faster method. Select Station Decoders, then choose the station number and select Ping. The results of a good ping test will show numbers and the prior inrush and holding current values. The inrush current reading is typically around 200 milliamps. A reading of 100 milliamps or less typically indicates an open output, often caused by a poor connection from the solenoid to the valve. The holding current is typically around 10 milliamps. A reading of 40 to 50 milliamps or greater typically indicates a shorted decoder output. When the decoder test passes for all stations, the alarm light turns off and all alarm conditions are cleared. After we've fixed all of our wiring issues, we should test all of the stations. So turn the dial to test all stations slash check system and select test all stations from the menu. The default is to run each station in sequence for two minutes, but you can adjust this between one and 10 minutes. Press run to start the test. If you turn the dial back to the auto position, you can monitor which station is running, how much time is left, and you can also advance to the next station. At this point, if we have valves that are still not turning on, we may have a mechanical issue that needs to be explored. Be sure to visit rainbird.com slash ESPLX series for product manuals and FAQs. You can also call us for free professional support for programming and troubleshooting.